Hello everyone, it's your girl LK here, back for another video. I'm so sorry if you can hear my little portable heater going in the background. My bunny has his own personal heater and it's really chilly today, so that's what's on right now and I can't exactly turn it off. So yeah, that's the little noise that you're hearing in the background. Huh. I'm so sorry, no video went up on Thursday. I was having some technical difficulties with my camera. Um, I realized it was actually the SIM card, so I had to go and get a new one, but that's fine because I decided to do a completely different video for this week. Um, today, we are going to do a little bit of a chatty video. We're going to be talking about performative activism. Yay, I figured this would be a great time, being that it is Black History Month, to, uh, tackle this topic. So if you are interested in hearing about performative activism and why it is a huge no-no, keep on watching. Hey guys, let me just pull up my notes because boy do I have a lot to say on this topic. Oh my goodness. Oh, hello. Ah, <sighs> performative activism. Activism. I'm, I, gonna struggle with how let's see how many times I mess up saying performative activism in this video y'all can count it's fine it's you can clown me in the comments it's okay so what is performative activism performative activism is essentially when you are supporting a cause to boost your social capital um, or to make yourself feel better not because you're actually devoted to the cause so I feel like the best example of that um, would be the Black Lives Matter movement when, you know, everybody would come on and do hashtag BLM or hashtag Black Lives Matter, and that was the extent of their support for the movement. They did the hashtag, they reposted the picture, but that was it. They did not, you know, educate themselves on police brutality or anything like that. They just... You, you, you do the bare minimum to one, make yourself look good, two, make yourself feel better, and three, boast your, boot, boast, boost your social media capital. Um, even if number three is not what you're intending to do, it's usually what happens when you are a performative activist. So that's what it is. So what's the problem with performative activism? Because what I usually hear is that, well, the act of it is coming from a good place. That's nonsense because it's a good intended act with zero intention behind it. Because if you actually had any intentional meaning behind this act, you would educate yourself on the movement, you would donate to the cause, you would, you know, have those difficult conversations with your family, call out your subtly racist friends, you know, you would, you would do more than just reposting a hashtag or reposting something on your Instagram story. So it's, while it may come from a very base level good place, there's no intention underneath it. And that's, that's the real problem with performative activism. You can't say you support Black Lives Matter or even the LGBTQ plus community um, and then just have your support stop there with your verbal support. Like you need, there has to be more intention behind it. That's the problem with it there. Now, you might be wondering why this all matters today. Why today? Um, and I, like I said, I wasn't coming on here to initially make this video, but something happened on Twitter this morning where a booktuber who I largely follow, um, she made a post on Twitter saying that she was recommended um, and shouted out as a black booktuber. And this happens a lot in Black History Month and there's nothing wrong with that. Lots of people will, lots of people in the booktube community or just YouTube community in general will come on and recommend other black booktubers for people to go and watch, maybe some smaller black content creators for you to like go and watch. And that's fine. That's like, people do that all the time. That's, that's okay. But the problem, <laughs> with this one was the booktuber that was recommended as a black booktuber. She's not black. Um, she, she isn't black. So she was recommended by, I don't know if it was another booktuber or a publisher or somebody recommended her for people to go and watch her as a black booktuber and she's not black. And now, again, you might be thinking, oh, well, that was an honest mistake. They didn't know. 
that's also crap because <laughs> this booktuber has said multiple times on multiple different plat platforms being her booktube and her Instagram that she is not black. She is Southeast Asian and Sri Lankan. And if you engage with her content on even a minuscule level, you would know that. So the issue is you've got people recommending quote unquote black booktubers or black content creators that aren't black and they don't know this because they never actually engaged with the content that they're promoting, which blows my mind. How do you recommend somebody but you've never engaged with their content. That's like somebody who largely what or largely promotes and reads horror and nonfiction going on their channel and being like, hey, it's Black History Month. Let's sh shout out some black booktubers. Um, Lovely Reads, LK from Lovely Reads is a black booktuber. You should go watch her without any preface of them saying, oh, by the way, she reads largely YA contemporary and a little bit of poetry. Like you, if you don't even have that baseline knowledge of what I'm doing on this channel, you've got no business promoting me. Just like if you don't even know her ethnicity or her race, you've got no business promoting her as a black booktuber. That blew my mind. That literally blew my mind. I was just like, oh my, it's 2022 and we're still doing this? Really? We're still doing this? Okay, fine. And it's not, don't, it's not, I'm not mad that she was recommended because she, she's very much, she's a booktuber of color. Like you, she, she's a booktuber of color, but it's the idea that we don't even feel the need to engage with the content that we're recommending and then provide a false recommendation and then backtrack and say, oops, it was a mistake. It wasn't a mistake. It was negligence on your part. That's what it was. Like point blank, that, that's there. There was no excuse for that mistake. The, you, you were lazy. That's what it was. You were lazy and you didn't actually care enough to engage with her content. Now, there's there's a few reasons that you you really shouldn't do this. Um, and like I said before, it's fine to shout out booktubers, black booktubers and Black History Month or just black booktubers in general or smaller content creators in general. It's fine to do that. But when you do it in a performative activism manner, it actually harms us more than it helps us. And I'll explain why. So like I said, if, you know, our horror nonfiction guy is recommending me on their channel saying, go watch L, but he's, they've never engaged with my content ever. And they send all their horror nonfiction people over to me. They come, they watch a couple of my videos, realize I don't actually talk about horror or nonfiction. Well, my views for certain videos may have gone up. Some of them may have even clicked subscribe because, you know, they felt the need to jump on this bandwagon. But then after my, fe like my February analytics will look really, really good. But then March onward, they all taper off. My analytics are now screwed because you've just sent a bunch of people over to my channel who had no business being on my channel. So you've just, you completely, on a statistical level, you've completely messed me up statistics wise. And other black booktubers have talked about this. This is not new information. Like you guys know this. Don't recommend my channel or anybody's channel to people who are not going to benefit from watching my channel. And I feel like this, it's, it's not a controversial thing because you don't have to like every small content creator or every black booktuber. There are black booktubers on here that I don't watch because we don't read the same genre. So it just, it doesn't do anything for my content. Now, what you can do is what I said previously, if you're, you know, recommending, if I'm recommending, you know, Samantha over at Samantha Reads, this is not a real person, it was a black content creator who I've watched a couple of her videos. You know, she talks about classics and and um, biology books, both things I just I don't mess with. Um, what I can say is, hey, you know, I've found this smaller black content creator. She talks about classics and scientific books. If that's something you're interested in, head on over to her channel because she's got what you need over there. At least you're providing some sort of background information to the people who are watching your video. So that way, if it's something that's going to benefit them, then they hop on over to her channel and then it benefits her channel because they actually engage with her content. They will comment, they'll watch the videos, they'll subscribe, her analytics will look great. And you know, she's boost an organic following. And then on top of that, not only did you just 
boost a black content creator or a smaller content creator, you actually did it the right way. You did your due diligence of actually watching the content, seeing, okay, it doesn't line up with what I do or what I provide, but you know, there's other people who may benefit it because they talk about X, Y, Z, and you've pitched it correctly. You can't just have a list of black content creators pop up on your screen and be like, hey, go watch them. That's, that is so disingenuous and I absolutely hate that like you're you literally could just type in black booktubers on YouTube and a bunch of us will pop up you take the first five put it on your screen and that's your performative activism for the month and honestly that happens quite a lot and it's really really discouraging and at most it's just bloody annoying and it has to stop because like I said it messes up the YouTube analytics you don't grow organically and honestly it's just disingen disingenuous and you wouldn't have done it if you didn't feel pressured to do it in some type of a way. You can't do a good deed half-assed. That's the thing. Like, you, you, that's, you can't do it. It's not honest at that point. It's a similar feat for when, you know, booktubers... I'm sorry to say, but when non-booktubers of color um, who are bigger on the platform will read book... Um, will read Black author books and... or read black author books or promote black author books and then throughout February and then never ever talk about it again or say they're going to read XYZ and then never read it. Now mind you, I completely understand if you're a mood reader, sometimes you're just not in the mood to read certain books. I get you on that. I'm not clowning you for that or anything like that. I completely understand. But or if they're only promoting a certain type of black author book, i.e. The Hate You Give, um, which is a phenomenal book. Don't get me wrong. I love that book. That was so well done. Angie Thomas knocked it out of the park. But that's not the only black experience out there. There are other black author books that paint a completely different picture of the black experience that are just as important and just as beautiful and deserve just as much recognition. But because performative activism has people thinking that they can do the bare minimum and that is okay, you know, you read The Hate You Give or you watch The Hate You Give and you go on your channel and you say, hey, this is the book that you should read. This provides great insight. Read this and that's it. Well, you know, again, you've just done the bare minimum there, you know, and on top of that, y you hopped on The Hate You Give because it's a popular book. Now, mind you, again, like I said, it's a good popular book, which is nice because sometimes that doesn't always happen but you hopped on it because it was popular nonetheless. So let's let's not forget that, okay? Um, when people will post throughout Black History Month, Dr. Martin Luther King quotes and ignore every other black figure in black history or throughout the civil rights movement or helped push black culture and, and make it thrive and make it beautiful or it's it's largely let me backtrack it's largely Dr. Martin Luther King or Rosa Parks and now I know why it's usually those two figures and that's a whole separate conversation a whole separate conversation I, I know damn well why it's those two figures that get pushed and again they should be pushed because they are phenomenal phenomenal black people who Honestly, if it wasn't for those two people, a lot of the privilege that we're enjoying right now as black people, we wouldn't be able to. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't push them. Push them. But don't forget about the rest of the movement. Like, people push those two because, well, one of the reasons people push those two is because information for them is easily accessible. You know, you type in Martin Luther King, Wikipedia will come up with like five facts automatically on him. It's the same thing for Rosa Parks. So it's very easy to just type that out, put that on your Instagram story, say happy Black History Month, and you've done your part for the month, right? No. No. There's so much more that goes into Black history and Black culture. And it's not enough to just say, hey, you know, this is what Dr. King said, or this is what Rosa Parks did. Y you can't ignore the rest of the movement. If you're not willing to do the research, if you're not actually willing to educate yourself, don't post anything at all because it's just frustrating. Like it's really just, you're spreading around either, like, how do I say it? You're, it's not, 
you're ignoring other important parts of the movement. And again, to circle back as to why this can be actually really, really dangerous and misinformative is when we were doing the Black Lives Matter movement and the organization came up with the hashtag Black Lives Matter. And under that hashtag, they were putting important information, but then everybody jumped on the bandwagon and they would do Black Lives Matter, like hashtag Black Lives Matter and only post the fist or like other protest pictures and not post any information. The whole, like the whole hashtag was just saturated with pictures and the information that the organization was actually trying to push got lost. That is a problem with performative activism. You can't just repost a picture or repost a quote and that's it. You've actually just muddled up the whole movement, okay? <laughs> You've prevented actual information from getting out there. If you're not going to do your part accurately, don't take part at all because you're just messing it up for the other people who are actually trying to get information out there. Yeah. I'm going to leave an article in the description box down below that is a pretty good summary of why performative activism is just absolute crap and just really a really lazy way social media has made it so people can be so lazy and do the absolute bare minimum and give themselves a pat on the back and i'm sorry it happens in the booktube community all the time and not just in regards it happens not just in regards to black people but just with minorities in general it happens a lot in the booktube community and you know it's black history month i'm gonna call it out so that's where just, just stop it if you're not going to be genuine about what you're do like, about what you're posting or the movement that you're following if you're not gonna have those really hard conversations with your family members call out your racist friends actually educate yourself on police brutality actually watch and engage with black content creators or smaller content creators then just don't d stay out of the way for the people who will so we can actually get the momentum and move forward that's what I have to say on that topic. And yes, this was all sparked by a Twitter comment that, um, or a Twitter post that the booktuber made about being mistaken as black when there was no reason for it. It wasn't a mistake. It was just pure laziness and just negligence. So, you know, do better. Stop making excuses and do better. Now, moving forward, it is time for our, um, black history shout out i explained this in my first video for february if you don't know what i usually do at the end of all my february videos because it's black history month i will shout out a prominent figure in black history um give you like one or two pieces of information on them and then you can go and google them yourself because google is free and it has everything you need so if you want to you can go and google them yourself the shout out is for the founders of the Black Panther Party. That was a political party that was designed for black people to defend themselves during the civil rights movement. And the founders were Huey Newton and Bobby Seale. I will put a picture of them somewhere on the screen so you can see them. That's Huey Newton and Bobby Seale. You can go Google them. Google the Black Panther Party um, and, you know, educate yourself on them because that's a really dope party and those two guys were awesome. So... Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, um, uh, no. If you got to the end of this video, go ahead and leave the little emoji with the sunglasses, that cool little emoji with the sunglasses. I am watching all my MVPs, guys. I see you, I see you. You guys are my favorite for the ones who get to the end of the video. You guys are my absolute favorites. Um, so go ahead, leave that emoji. Don't forget to be commenting your questions for my You Ask, I Answer series. At the end of the month, I will be picking a question for that, not next week, but the week after. So start leaving some questions and we'll have that discussion. Um, subscribe if you find my channel entertaining and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.